Hello there, wonderful people. God bless you. Shanda Rabosa Karabrata. How are you wonderful people doing on this wonderful, glorious day? Thank you, Relina Rascon, for being a subscriber. God bless you. Praise God, friends. Give us some hearts and likes as you jump in. I want to talk to you about the signs of the times. We are living in very prolific times very important seasons as the coming of the day of the Lord is hastening very fast, very soon. So this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, one of your favorite prophetic voices. I want to talk to you today about the signs of the times because there's a lot of signs going off. There's a lot of prophecies coming to pass. And I believe these are things for us to catch our attention. These are points, moments, and markers for you and I to seek the Lord in. Amen. But it's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. Let me know where you're watching from, friends. Give us some hearts and likes. Do share this on your wall. Hallelujah. Comment below where you're watching from because in a few minutes, I will begin our teaching for the day, the word for the day. I am still here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. This is my last day here. I return tomorrow. Uh, back to the state side. But uh, I wanted to see you, to greet you, to release this word over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Melissa, thank you for being a subscriber. Des Michelle, God bless you, from South Africa. Sarah from Canada. Chanel, Glendale, Arizona. San Antonio, Texas. South Africa, North Carolina. Glory to God. Danya Dugobi, Danya. I'm going to be in Grand Junction this weekend, would love to see you. I know it's a bit of a drive or one flight away. South Africa in the house, glory to God. Bosa, watching from Alabama. Nicolette, hello. Amy, good to see you. Amen. Your last live was on fire. Thank you, thank you. Woodlands, Texas. Tanya Dugobi, I will be in Grand Junction, Colorado, uh, at the Glory Hub. It's my third time ministering there. God's doing a great thing in Colorado State. Would love to see you. I can, you could go on my website, benlimglobal.com, Miss Danya, to see all of our information. Would so love to see you again, Danya. Hallelujah. Continue to get the likes up. Let's get the algorithms up, my friends. You already know I've been quite absent for the last two weeks or so. And, uh, I'm happy to be back here to meet and greet you, my Facebook and social media family. Thank you for sharing. Stephanie says, lives are always on fire. Thank you. Yes, Tanya, would love, love, love to see you. Mobile, Alabama, glory to God. Continue to give us some hearts and likes, share this on your wall. Today, I wanna to talk about the signs of the times, amen. So let's break the 100 mark. Let's break the 150, 200 mark. Tag somebody, share this on your wall in the mighty name of Jesus. This is one of your favorite prophetic voices, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and I cannot wait to talk to you about the signs of the times, the signs of what is taking place. And really, we need a quickening of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is quickening. Amen. So, shat <clears throat> Continue to let me know where you're watching from. Praise God, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma City. Hello there, Kerry, Yate, Yate. Shababa Kata. And like I said, I'm still here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. This is kind of like my last day 
a vacation. I return tomorrow stateside. Wednesday, I will be in Grand Junction, Colorado. Glory to God. Hello there. Karen from Florida. Thank you, Lisa. Missed you too. Brenda, yesterday's game, a sign? I believe it was, and we're going to get into that. But there are many more signs than just yesterday's Super Bowl game. Amy Muirhead, God bless from KC. Glory, glory, New Mexico. Virginia Beach, VA, Cyprus. Continue to share this on your wall. Tag somebody. For the man of God, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim is in the house. Prophet Luis, good to see you. Jesus, Jesus. Bloomington, Indiana. God bless. Zibaba si karabrata bosha tarabrata si karabata torobosha ta. Shut up. Well, let me get right into this word. Amen. Let me get right into this word. Now, we understand that there are signs everywhere. And God is constantly trying to catch our attention. And probably since 2020 to now, there has been an increase of the one world order activity. There's been an increase of supernatural activity. We understand since uh, really even before Trump got into presidency. And yes, I believe wholeheartedly that Trump is going to win a second presidential term. Amen. However, even before Trump came into presidency or ran for uh, office, we have been seeing an increase of warfare and an increase of darkness, an increase of supernatural activity. There's been such an increase of the supernatural that there are so many signs that are pointing to the day of the Lord. But I believe wholeheartedly that before the great devastation of the Lord, there's going to be a great revival. There's going to be a great move of God. There's going to be a great sweeping <clears throat> excuse me, of souls into God's kingdom. So there's going to be a great sweeping of salvations into God's kingdom. So revival and riots go hand in hand. Revivals and riots go hand in hand. You see that in the book of Acts chapter 16, where there was a revival in the, in the region of Ephesus. And even as there was a revival by the apostle Paul, there was also riots taking place. Why? Because the religious system hated the gospel. <clears throat> the religious Pharisees, uh, the enchanters, the witches, the warlocks, about they hated the move of God. So because their money was tied into idolatry, their money was tied into the temple of Artemis, to the false god of Artemis, and to the temple, and to making idols and statues, and to leading people into paganism. Because money is always involved, because money is power. So therefore, there was a riot in Ephesus. But who here knows that that even thrusted the revival of Ephesus to go even further. So riots and revivals go hand in hand. So we understand that whenever there's times of darkness, that means his glory, his light, his favor, his power, his miracles are gonna shine and manifest even stronger more than ever before in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. So in these days, we're living in dualistic times where it's both bitter yet it's sweet. Excuse me. It's both bitter, yet it's sweet. It's difficult, yet for the saints, it's going to get easier. It's not going to be bitter for you. It's going to be better. You're going to go from better to better and gooder to gooder. If you believe it, say amen. So we're living in days of dualities or dual realities where there's difficulty on one hand, but on the other side, it's, it's filled with glory. It's filled with miracles. It's filled with provision. It's filled with the supernatural hand of God. If you're with me today, say amen. And give us some hearts and likes. Now, I believe that there are more and more signs that are taking place. More and more signs to catch our attention. What does a sign do? Imagine you're driving and you look at a stop sign. What does a stop sign do? A stop sign is giving you an instruction or a direction. I want you to comment that instruction or direction. So a stop sign is instructing you to do something. So whenever there are signs in the supernatural, whenever there are signs, whether from God or from the demonic, whenever there are signs 
taking place on the earth. It is a sign of instruction. God's trying to catch your attention to lead you to do something. Come on, somebody. I feel the power of God on this broadcast already. God is trying to catch your attention to lead you, to direct you, to instruct you to do something. So signs are a wonder. And that's why they're called signs and wonders. Signs make you wonder. Hmm. It makes you ponder. It makes you think. Signs cause you to stop and to think. Amen. But how many of us do we go so fast throughout our life? On to the next thing. And the media, the false news, the lying news mediums, they're trying to distract us constantly and literally invade our mind and our mental space so that we have no time, we have no space to properly ponder and to think. That's why we need to learn to meditate. The Bible says, meditate on God's word day and night, night and day, so that you shall be successful, so that it shall go well with you in the land. That's why we need to think upon these things. Jesus said, think upon my words. Think upon these things. But so many of us are inundated with life, with the busyness of the mundane, of the busyness of life, where we're not able to stop and think properly. Are we really getting what God is speaking? Are we really receiving, retrieving what the Lord is trying to speak? And that's why every sign is a wonder. However, it is also a mystery. I want to say mystery. It's also a mystery. Why? Because those who have eyes to see will see. And those who have ears to hear will hear. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. Say parables. Jesus spoke in parables to veil, to hide the true meaning. So that those who are truly hungry and thirsty will seek will, and they will find. They, they will go beyond what the natural eyes see. They will go beyond hit about what the carnal mind wants to think. So there's a greater meaning and implication in the spirit. And the Lord wants us to come up higher. And I don't know about you, but I'm going higher. I want to see with the eyes of God. I want to feel with the heart of God. I want, I want to discern the times and the seasons. And really, that is the oil of Issachar. That's the tribe of Issachar. Because the Bible says that the tribe of Issachar discerned the times and the seasons. Are you able to discern? Come on, church. Are you able to discern? And I believe there's many signs today. Oh, my goodness, guys. Even from the beginning of this year. I mean, how many of the prophetic words that the Lord has released through this ministry, have already come to pass. Let me ask you, if you've been following me, if you are a faithful follower uh, to our ministry and you saw the broadcast that I publicly did prophesying 23 words for this year, 2023, amen. Why? Because God does nothing on the earth unless he first reveals it to his prophets, amen, his servants. Shut up. And of course, I released 23 prophetic words for this year, 2023. And many of them have already come to pass. It is scary. And one of the words that I released, that the Lord released through me, was watch the skies, the heavens. That there were going to be signs in the skies. Signs in the skies. Now, I believe there's many signs taking place right now. God is wanting to prepare the church prepare the body. He's wanting to get us ready for what's about to come because this is going to be a grand and glorious year. That's right for you, for the saints. He who has ears to hear, she who has eyes to see, let them see. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to catch all that God's saying so that I will be ahead and not behind so that I will be the head and not be below. So today I want to talk about signs of the times and discerning the times, discerning the signs, excuse me. Because if you discern the signs, you will discern the times. I'm going to repeat that again. The signs determine the times. The signs determine the times. Let me go a little bit uh, deeper. Let me give you an example. If you are pregnant, okay, 
If you are pregnant as a lady, as a woman, biological, biblical woman, if you are pregnant, then there is a sign of a baby bump. There is a sign that you are impregnated and now you are carrying a human being, you are carrying a life form in your body, in your womb. So the sign will now determine the time, which means now you are in a time of being more aware of what you eat, being more aware of what you do. You cannot uh, drink alcohol, you cannot smoke, you cannot do certain things because of the sign. So therefore the sign determines the time. You're in a different sleeping schedule now. You're, you're in a different eating schedule now. You're, you're in a different eating habit now. Now things begin to change because of the sign. Are you hearing me? So when we properly discern the sign, then we will be able to discern the times. Now I want to go to some scripture here. And I want to talk to you about discerning the signs. Because there's so much going on right now. And I don't know about you, but it just seems like since the beginning of this year, my goodness, there's just been an onslaught, a plethora of signs. So much going on, right? Amen. And again, there's an acceleration. There is an increase and an acceleration because this world is fallen and this world is going to pass. But those who are born again in Christ Jesus, we have a new Zion, a new Jerusalem, a new city, Amen. And we also have a new heavens and a new earth. But look for the sign, says God. And first and foremost, let's go to the word of God. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Genesis 1.14. Come on, somebody. Genesis 1.14. If you're with me today, say amen. It's good to see you, Melissa and Rob and, and all of you, a prophetess Ivana. Genesis 1.14. And God said, let there be light in the expanse of of the heavens to separate from day and from night. I'm going to just post this here. Glory to God. Genesis 1, 4, let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to separate, say separate, the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Isn't that interesting? So here, God is saying that the lights in the sky, which are really stars, okay? And some of them could be angels. And that's for another day, for another time. But God is saying here in, in Genesis 1, 14, he's saying these signs in the sky, these are signs in the night and in the day and for the seasons and for the years. These are signs. I want you to say signs. So God is saying the stars in the sky, Okay, and that's why the Hebrews believe in the Maseroth, okay? Not in astrology, but in the Maseroth, okay? Which is a, a form of studying the stars, okay? And understanding the times of seasons. I mean, where do you think we get time from? Where do you think we, you know, we get the lunar calendar, solar calendar from, right? Where do you, where do you think we, we depict if it's a, a leap year or not? But... Here, the word sign, amen, the word sign in Hebrew, if you're following me, say amen. The word sign in Hebrew is oath. I want you to say oath. And, and oath is very interesting, O-T-H, all right, if you're going to phonetically speak it out. But what it means is a banner, a pledge, and a standard. I'm going to read that again. A banner, a pledge, and a standard. It also means a mark or a token. A banner, a pledge, a standard, a mark, and a token. Banner, pledge, standard, a mark, and a token. Okay. So God is saying the stars in the sky, they are signs. They are, they are signs. And they are a banner, a pledge, and a standard, and a token. Now, why is this important? Because these are standards of what God's about to do. 
These are marks of what God is about to do. Markers, tokens, okay? Now, let's just talk about markers and tokens. If you understand the Hebraic stance of the Bible, or even if you understand the prophetic, you will understand that everything in the Bible is about signs and symbols. I've taught this many times. But the Jewish people are all about signs and symbols, okay? So everything is a sign. Everything is a symbol, okay? The fish, the 153 fish that Peter caught uh, after he was restored with Jesus. The cross is a sign, is a symbol. All right, the mantle is a sign. The menorah is a sign. So everything is, is a sign and a symbol. It is a mark. It is a token. In fact, you and I, we as people, we are also signs and tokens. We are also markers, okay? So what happens if you mark something, okay? Let's, let's take this a little bit deeper here. If you mark something, that marker, it stands for remembrance. Now imagine you're a child and you're growing up in the same house. What do you do? You're getting taller, you're growing taller. So what do you do? You mark on the wall how tall you're growing, your height. It's a marker. So a marker has to do with measurement. Oh, I feel the Lord right now. A standard has to do with measurement. And of course, Jesus is the ultimate and final standard. Amen. The Holy Ghost in you is increasing the standard of truth, righteous. Of course, we are his righteous, but Jesus is the ultimate and final standard. So when you mark, it's for measurement. So the signs in the sky are tokens and markers for measurement. To measure what? To measure if the bowl is going to be full or if it's not. To measure if it's going to be a tipping point. To measure if it's at the full height, the full standard of what the Lord's about to do. If you're following me right now, say amen. Measurements are important. Why, why is it important? Because measurements will dictate where you are in life. And even now we start a new year, so many of us, we have new goals and we're measuring our goals, we're measuring our steps, we're evaluating, considering, evaluating where we are, how far we've come, our performance, our finances, our spirituality, our, our personal ability, what's going on, we're measuring. So the signs of the skies are to measure. If this pen is the timeline of God from Genesis now to Revelation, where am I on the measuring stick? How far off are we until the next harvest, the next tipping point, the next overflow, the next outpouring? How far are we on the measuring stick of God's timeline? If you're following me so far, say amen, give us some hearts and likes. So the signs in the sky are for measurements. And that's in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter one, verse 14. Now let's go over here, Matthew 16, three. Hallelujah. Matthew 16, 3. The Bible says, and in the morning, and this is the words, uh, this is the words here. Uh, but Jesus replied, in the morning, it will be stormy today for the sky is red and threatening. For the sky is red and threatening. Thank you, Lord. For the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky. <laughs> but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. So you look out the window and you see a dark cloud. And you know how to interpret or discern it's going to rain today. You look outside and it's sunny. Then you know how to interpret the sign of the weather. So now you say, now I'm going to go in short shorts and flip-flops. 
But if it's dark, cloudy, gloomy, and it feels cold and windy, then you better get a shawl or a jacket. You better you better get a clothed and rugged up because you know by interpreting the signs of the sky, now you know how to act or now you know how to react or to respond. If you follow me, just nod your head, yes. So the sign of the weather outside, it will, based on your interpretation, it will determine what you wear and what you do. Come on, if you're following me, just nod your head yes and give me some hearts and likes. So many of us, we need to learn to properly discern or interpret what's going on outside. What's happening with the weather? What's going on in the world? Now, uh, when, when the Grammys took place, uh, of course, on Instagram, not on Facebook, but on Instagram, I posted some of the demonic images of Sam Smith and the Grammys performance. And uh, just, again, the enemy has infiltrated Hollywood and media and the culture of the world. Nothing is new. Nothing is new under the sun. Absolutely. It's not a new thing. But what is new is that they're being blatantly more and more out in the public and bold in the open with no shame. They're not hiding their pedophilia. They're not hiding their demonic Satanism. They're not hiding their cabal. They're not hiding their witchcraft. They are not hiding their evil antichrist agendas anymore. So that's the new thing. And it's going to increase more and more and more. Why? To subjugate or to begin to influence and manipulate the worldwide mass media, the people worldwide, to accept it as normal, to accept it and be more tolerant as it's just the way it is now. So they're slowly seeding and manipulating our kids. Look at Disney. What is Disney doing? Disney is continuing to put in homosexual LGBTQ plus A agendas in their shows. They're continually, slowly trying to manipulate and push the measurement the measuring line, the marker of what's acceptable or not. They're continually trying to push the sign, the marker, the token, the standard of what's acceptable or not. Are you hearing me? Now, some of us, we are pushing the boundaries of grace. Now, that's a whole different topic to talk about, the boundaries of grace, because God's grace is boundless, is limitless, is endless. Hallelujah, because he is God and he's God alone. However, even Apostle Paul says, do not take your grace for granted, treating it like it's cheap grace. You're constantly living on the edge, trying to push the boundaries of grace to see if you can slip away or go away with doing that deed of darkness or that hidden sin in your heart, in your life. Are y'all hearing me today? I'm not seeing too many comments right now, so why don't you just comment and respond if you're with me right now, amen. But you see, the world is trying to move the markers or the measuring sticks so that you and I will accept, tolerate, and say, agree that it's truth. But no, we do not agree. We agree with the word of God. We agree with the words of Jesus, with the red letters of Yeshua HaMashiach. We agree with God's word. If you believe me today, say amen. If you're with me today, say amen. Now, I don't know if Facebook is, is uh, trying to shadow ban me right now because I barely see any comments. Well, I guess I see it on my laptop, but not on my phone, which I'm doing to Facebook Live. But amen, just... Keep interacting in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So the world is trying to push the measuring stick, the measuring standard of what's acceptable or not. But we, the church, we are the standard. You, the church of Jesus Christ, we are the marker. One man, one woman of God, one godly saint, one intercessor that is in Sodom and Gomorrah. If it was for 50, if it was for 10, come on, we are the sign. We are salty and we are lighty and we are salt and light to the earth. We are a sign, a measuring mark, a conviction notice declaring to the ages of the power and, and to the eons of the ages, declaring that there is a God in heaven and a God above. 
And you and I, we are signs. We are signs. I want to encourage you, as long as you are alive, it means that you are a sign of God's revelation and of his mystery. As long as you are alive, it means that you are a sign that there's still hope for the world. I'm going to repeat that again. As long as you are alive, you are a sign that there's still hope for the world. Because God needs a conduit, a servant, a man, woman of God to fill, to use, and to infiltrate for the purposes of his glory. Somebody say, I am a sign. Now, once again, Matthew 16, 3. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. My goodness. Alert, alert, alert. The sign, the sky is red and threatening. Alert, alert, alert. Now that Greek word of signs in Matthew 16, 3, that Greek word, hear me now, is semion. Someone say semion. And what that word sign semion means, it means a miraculous indication. I'm going somewhere with this. Just stay with me. I know I'm teaching here. I'm laying a foundation for you. Simeon or a sign in the Greek. It means a miraculous indication. A miraculous indication. What does that mean? That means it is a supernatural occurrence. It is a supernatural celestial. It is an unusual supernatural occurrence. So Simeon... It means a miraculous indication. A miraculous indication. All right. Now, now let's go to the meat of what I want to talk about today. In Jesus' name. There are many signs God's releasing. Jesus, help me. There are many signs that God has released right now. And listen, there's personal signs for you. And it's just corporate signs for the body. There's personal signs for your life. Where personally in your God walk, in your relationship with Jesus, God is trying to catch your attention. Don't do that. Do this. Go left. Go right. Speak to that person. Hold your breath. Hold your words. So there are personal signs that God's given you. And what can personal signs be? Simeon or oath in Hebrew. What can signs be? Signs can be repetition. Signs can be numbers. Signs can be maybe animals or birds or, or, or you know, certain instances that continue to happen, cycles and patterns that continue to repeat itself. Uh, me moving is a sign. You know, so there's all these personal signs that can also be a corporate sign. But there's also signs for the world. There's also signs, indications, markers, tokens for the world. Measuring. You're in the right track. It's going this way. Or you are going off track. Hello, this is a sign that you're about to get promoted. Hola, como estas? This is a sign that you are about to go to the next level. This is a sign that God's wanting to do something. This is a sign. Hear about this is a sign that the Lord's about to move on the earth in the body of Christ like never before. This is a sign. And when there is an increase and an acceleration of signs, we must pay attention, church. We must pay attention. My goodness. If you're with me today, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes, share this on your wall. Because I believe there have been many signs of the times that the Lord has been releasing. Now, some of it is God's doing, absolutely. Some of it is God's doing. Some of it is God's allowance. Therefore, it is a sign. Okay. Now, the hurricanes, is that God 
Is that God's fault? If there is such a thing as a good God, then why is there evil in the world? If there, and I, I feel like I'm going pretty deep today, okay? And I'm not necessarily talking about end times or eschatology today, but it is tied in because we are in, in the beginning of times. We are in the beginning of the end times. We are, we absolutely are. Do I believe, hear me now, do I believe we are in the end of times or in the end times? I believe we still have more time, but it's not time to waste. It's not time to fight. It's not time to play games. It's time for us to mobilize and to advance and to preach the gospel. Prophets lead the church forward. While many are stuck in our mundane, in our finances, our business, our own personal family, I understand. It's the, it's the beauty and the glory of God. But prophetic voices, our job is to alert, warn, and prepare the people. Alert, warn, and prepare the people. Something bigger is coming. Something greater is coming. And I've been talking to you about the flood that's coming. I've been talking to you about the famine. I've been talking to you for the last few years that the famine and the flood, it's coming. Greater persecution of the church is coming. Greater devastation. It's, it's written in the Bible. It's obvious. I am not a dooms and glooms day preacher. Absolutely not. But it's obvious. And we need to continue to sound the alarm. And we need to be prepared and we need to be ready. Because there are obvious signs of the times. All right. Now let's go into this. Because... Okay, let, let me just quote one more scripture here. Amen. Let me just quote one more scripture for you. And then we're going to get into the meat of what I want to talk about. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 4. <laughs> Jesus said, see to it that no one deceives you or leads you astray. See to it that no one deceives you or leads you astray. Now, this is the first sign listed in Matthew 24 about the great and perilous end times, the great times of tribulation, Matthew 24, 4. It is worldwide deception. It's not even the devastation, but it's deception. It's not even the destruction or the famine, but it is deception. It is an antichrist spirit utilizing media and mediums to infiltrate the minds, the sheeplings and the goats of the world. So it is worldwide deception. So that is the first sign of the end times, the first sign. Great deception, even the church were so deceived. The church is so divided. The church is so, the church is so filled with the potions of Jezebel and the intoxications of Delilah. We need an awakening and it's happening and it's coming in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. So the disciples asked Jesus, what's the sign of your return and of your coming? What's the sign that these things are gonna take place? And Jesus, number one, it's deception. So I pray that God will release a spirit of truth and a wisdom and revelation so that you and I, we will not be deceived by false prophets, money-mongering people, but we will truly be in the fire and in the will of God. And of course, continuing on Matthew 24, Jesus talks about wars and rumors of wars, famines, tragedies, devastations, etc., etc. But what are the signs, friends, from 2023 to today? We're already in mid-February, y'all. Mid-February, do you believe it? But since the beginning of this year, literally in the last 40 plus days, 44 days of 2023, 
Here are some signs that have been released on the earth. Number one, in the United States, hello, in the United States, spy surveillance balloons. I believe that's a sign. Spy surveillance balloons. That is a sign. What is that a sign of? That's a sign of possible invasion of the United States. It's a sign of, of the world superpower having its defense lines down and low. It's a sign of the weakening of the United States. And why, why, is, that a, why is that important for us to note and to mark? Because if that happens, then China will automatically become the world superpower. And now we are in trouble, folks. That communistic evil red dragon spirit will try to take over. The, in fact, it has taken over much of the world already. Infiltrated in the foundations of the secret labs. Do you think the Wuhan virus was an accident out of China? No, it wasn't. It was conspired by many of the Illuminati and the One World Order. So these spy balloons, number two, UFO sightings. What happened just the last few days? Now they're talking about aliens. They're talking about UFO sightings. Unusual extraterrestrial objects, stings in the sky, my friends. Is this a hoax? Is this a distraction? What is going on? These UFO sightings. And we already know, listen, I believe there are aliens. Absolutely. I believe there are aliens. Okay. Do I believe in an alien invasion? No. It, they're talking about Nephilim. They're talking about demonic spirits trying to invade the earth. All right. Which is the tribulation in the end times. But there's UFO sightings even in the last few days. Why is there such an increase of unusual, supernatural, miraculous indications, signs? Number three, what's the third sign? Again, look at the Grammys. <clears throat> look at the Grammys, y'all. Was that an accident? These Baal, Malek, Astaroth, sexual, sensual, perverse, evil, demonic, sodomistic, like Sodom and Gomorrah, was that an accident? It absolutely was not. I believe that's a sign of deception and evil and wickedness coming across the earth. What is another sign? The World Economic Forum, the WEF. They met just a few weeks ago. <laughs> And of course, there were shootings in America happening at the same time. Is that a coincidence or is that a sign? The World Economic Forum coming together to really destroy or control the world. That's a sign. That's a sign. Of evil men, women conspiring together to destroy the planet. What is another sign? Turkey and Syria. The greatest natural disaster devastation since the tsunami hit Japan in 2011. So it's been about 12 years since then. So Japan's uh, let, let me just bring this. Japan's death toll. Wow. And it's so sad to even read this. In 2011 with the tsunami. Was. Around 20,000. And listen, you could say. It was judgment. You could say God's judging the people of Japan or the gods of Japan. Anyhow. It's devastating. And it's lives and souls that Jesus loves. And a Jesus 
wants to see saved. The Bible says he desires that no man will perish, but that all will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is not God's desire. It's not, God is not a God of war. God's not a God of rage. However, Turkey and Syria, over 25,000 people have died in this earthquake. And guess what? One of the first words I prophesied for this year was the two E's, earthquakes and eruptions. Earthquakes and eruptions. Prophet Kim Clement prophesied about the two E's many years ago. And concerning 2023, the Lord brought in my spirit so strong, the two E's, the two E's, earthquakes and eruptions. Is that a sign? Is that a sign? Jesus. In the Middle East as well. What's another sign, friends? The hurricanes in New Zealand happening right now. The most devastating hurricanes are hitting New Zealand right now. Is this a sign? Do we not discern? Can we not interpret? Now it gets better, friends, okay? I know it is, this feels very heavy, but I want us to catch and to grasp the magnitude of of what's going on because we need to be aware and alert and be awake the magnitude but what else is going on the asbury revival at the asbury university in kentucky now is it a true revival there's many there's different types of revivals first and foremost different types of revivals but i believe there is a genuine awakening and God is sincerely moving at that university, the Asbury University. So to me, that's a sign of revival and harvest in America amongst the young people, the university campuses. It's a sign. Hallelujah. And now let's talk about yesterday, the chiefs. Winning the Super Bowl. Now, this is the complaint or the argument of many people. God doesn't need to speak through a silly football game. We have his word. Why would God speak through a football game? Through man's creation where the football game is in a sense, tied a lot to the demonic and human trafficking, etc., etc. Well, because God can. God can use anything. Anything can be a prophetic sign. So I felt in my spirit the Chiefs were going to win yesterday's Super Bowl. And I don't watch the Super Bowl, but... I was here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, relaxing in my hotel. They were playing it here on the beach. So I just joined. It was, it was great and fun. But I, I saw the comeback of the Chiefs. And I knew, once again, that this is a sign. Is the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl? Is that a sign? Is that a sign? Of course, the prophet Bob Jones prophesied. That when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, it will be a sign of the billion soul harvest. Now, you can think that's silly. You can think that's profane, not prophetic. But is it a sign? And of course, they won twice now in the last five years. And hear me now. I felt this impression yesterday. I believe the Chiefs are going to win a third time, even in the next few years. I want you to catch that. I believe the Chiefs will win. I'm not prophesying, thus says the Lord, but I believe, I feel sense, I have an inclination that the Chiefs are going to win a third time in the next few years. 
And when that happens, that will be another sign, another marker, token, indication, standard, measurement of what is happening in Jesus' name. All these signs are going off at one time. What is going on? And even now outside, I'm hearing sirens go off right now. What is going on, Lord? What is happening? Well, guess what? I wanna encourage you, friends. These are signs that make us wonder. And these are also signs that point us to Jesus. It points us to the next move of God. It points us to the billion soul harvest. It points us to what God is about to do on the face of this earth. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has fathomed what God has prepared for those who truly love him. And I believe we need to properly discern the signs for it will determine the times. Glory to God. Glory to God. And there's going to be more signs. More prophecies are going to come to pass. More things are going to take place. More unfortunate, evil circumstances are going to take place. But these are all signs for us to pray, to seek God's face and to prepare the body of Christ. Glory to God. Signs. I hope you received this word today and this word encouraged you today. I feel a sense of urgency and the fear of the Lord, even as I shared all that I did today on this broadcast. But we must discern the times, my friends. Discern the signs and the times. Because God says, these lights are markers and indicators for the signs and seasons. I want you to lift up your hands right now. Lord, I thank you. God, I ask you, I feel an urgency. I feel a fear. I feel an awakening from slumber. God, I ask you, touch and encourage your people. And Lord, I thank you that we will not be left behind. We will not be behind, we'll be ahead. We will not be below, we'll be the head. And we ourselves, we are signs on the earth. We are a peculiar people on the earth. God, I ask you, strengthen your people today and encourage your children today so that we, will properly prepare your people and to do what's right before you. It's not time to play games. It's not time to lily-dally. It's not time to be nonchalant. Because since 2020 to now, everything's changed. And there is no turning back. Normal is now never. And I pray that you and I, we will continue to advance forward and we will discern the signs because God is trying to get your attention. He's trying to get the attention of the church. Repent, turn to me, turn away from your wicked ways. If you humble yourselves and turn away from wicked ways and if you seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal your land. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, fire of the Holy Ghost and any fear will be bound and broken, but that there will be so much joy and gratitude knowing that our fountains are found in you and that our foundation is Christ alone. It's not by works, it's not by might, but it's by your spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for the end times billion soul harvest that's coming. It's here. And for all that you're doing on the earth, Lord, thank you for the signs. Let your will be done. 
in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, friends, tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard, I'm doing our next free Zoom webinar, amen, on unlocking prophetic mysteries. Unlocking prophetic mysteries. Tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard. And I would love to see you. This is a very prophetic month. The month of February is a very, very prophetic month. So I would love to see you. But you do have to register ASAP. Amen. So register here, my friends. I would love to see you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Love to see you tonight, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard. I'm telling you, I am using my last night here in Puerto Vallarta when I should be having more vacation time. But I'm using it to bless you, to minister to you, and to get the word of God in you because we are living in very prophetic times. And we all need to be grafted in the vine and we need to be connected to the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you enjoyed today's teaching, please do consider sharing this broadcast, giving us a heart and a like, follow on Facebook, even be a subscriber. So thank all of you for being a subscriber or a follower. Also, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I would love to keep seeing you more. Amen. I love you all. Happy February. Thank you for sharing and being on this broadcast. And I pray that the Lord will bless you immensely and he will raise you up to be a burning and shining lampstand in Jesus' name. Thank you, Danya. Lots would need to work out for me. I know Danya would love to see you, sis. Well, friends, love you all. Bless you. And I'll see you soon. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Shalom to you. I'll see you tonight on a webinar or this week. I'll be in Grand Junction, Colorado. Next week, I will be in Florida. The week after that, I will be in Arizona. Amen. God bless, friends. Shalom.